All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of two minus x to the power of three is equal to 80. So to solve this equation, I'm gonna first start by subtracting 80 on both sides. So now I get x to the power of two minus x to the power of three minus 80 is equal to zero. Now from here, I'm gonna replace 80 negative 80, I should say, with negative 16 minus 64. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as, I'm going to first rewrite negative 16 as negative 4 squared, and negative 64 as negative 4 to the power of 3. And I'm going to group x squared with negative 4 squared, and x to the power of 3 with negative 4 to the power of 3. So now there's two properties that I'm going to use. And before that, I'm going to write this as x squared minus 4 squared, and I'm going to group this minus x to the power of 3 plus 4 to the power of 3. We put this plus because this negative sign distributes. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. And if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, which is this, this is equal to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So for x squared minus 4 squared, it's going to turn into x plus 4 times x minus 4. I have this minus a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, or in this case, x to the power of 3 plus 4 to the power of 3 is going to turn into x plus 4 times x squared minus 4x plus 16. Now, because both of these terms have x plus 4 in them, I can factor out x plus 4. So I get x plus 4 times x minus 4 minus x squared minus 4x plus 16 is equal to zero. Now from here, this is equal to x plus four times x minus four minus x squared plus four x minus 16. I just distribute the negative sign is equal to zero. And let's simplify this even more. I get x plus four times negative x squared plus 5x minus 20 is equal to zero. So I get two equations from this. I get x plus 4 equals zero, and negative x squared plus 5x minus 20 is equal to zero. So first, for x plus 4 equals zero, all we have to do is subtract 4 on both sides, and we get x is equal to negative 4. Now for negative x squared plus 5x minus 20 equals zero, well first off, we have a negative sign in front of x squared, so I'm actually going to get rid of that by multiplying both sides by negative 1. So I get x squared minus 5x plus 20 is equal to 0. And now, to solve this, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 5, and c is 20. So I get x is equal to negative of negative 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 5 squared, which is 25 minus 4 times a, which is 1 times c, which is 20, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And this is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 80 over 2, which is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 55 over 2. Now, this is equal to the square root of 55 times the square root of negative 1 over 2. And the square root of negative 1 is equal to the imaginary number i. So I get 5 plus or minus the square root of 55i over 2. So this is two more solutions to this equation. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share this to any of your friends and family.
Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. So we have 8 to the power of x is equal to 80. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 80 as 8 times 10. So we have 8 to the power of x is equal to 8 times 10. Now notice how we have two eights on both sides. And what I want to do is I want to move this eight to our left hand side. And the only way to do that is to divide both sides by eight. So if I divide both sides by eight, I get eight to the power of x divided by eight is equal to these two cancel out. So I'm simply left with 10. Now, this 8 here is the same thing as 8 to the power of 1, right? And now, if we have something in the form a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So, a to the power of x divided by a to the power of 1, we can think of a as 8 here x as m and 1 as n. So if we plug this in, we get 8 to the power of x minus 1. This is equal to 10. Now 8 here, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3, right? So I'm going to rewrite 8 to the power of x minus 1 as 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 10. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, oops, sorry, n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x minus 1, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3 times x minus 1 is equal to 10. Now we have to simplify this, so we're going to distribute the 3. So this would be 2 to the power of 3 times x is 3x minus 3 times 1 is 3. Now this is equal to 10. So now we have 2 to the power of 3x minus 3 is equal to 10. And now I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 2 to the power of 3x minus 3 is equal to log 10. Now, an important property of logarithms is that let's say we have something in the form log a to the power of b, right? Well, we can actually move our exponent b here to the front of the logarithm. So this would be equal to b times log a. And this is an important property because let's say we have some 2 to the power of x is equal to 5, right? A simple exponential equation. Well, we can just take the log on both sides. So we can move this exponent x to down because we wouldn't want, we can't solve this exp equation if x is an exponent. We want it to be a real term. So that is why this property is so important. So in this case, as you can see, x in this case is an exponent. It's not an actual term. And if we want to find the value of x, we want x to be an actual term. So I'm going to use this property here and move our exponent here, 3x minus 3, to the bottom. So now we will have 3x minus 3 times log 2 is equal to log 10. Now, because we want to find our value for x, we're going to have to isolate it. 
So we can do that by first dividing both sides by log 2 to move our log 2 to our right hand side. So then these two cancel out and I'll be left with 3x minus 3 is equal to log 10 over log 2. Now, the value of log 2, this is equal to 0 0.301. And log 10, this is the same thing as 1, because any logarithm always has a base of 10. So this is the same thing as log base 10 of 10. And this is essentially asking 10 to the power of x is equal to 10. So what is x? And x is equal to 1, right? So log 10 is equal to 1. So now we have 3x minus 3 is equal to 1 over. Now log 2, that is equal to 0 0.301. So we have 1 over 3.0, 0 0.301, sorry. So 3x minus 3 is equal to 1 over 0 0.301. Now 1 over 0 0.301, this is equal to approximately 3.3223. So now we have 3x minus 3 is equal to 3.3223. So I can simply add 3 on both sides. So now I have 3x is equal to... 3 plus 3.3223 3 is equal to 6 point, sorry, 3223. 3. Now I can divide both sides by 3 because we want to isolate x. These two would cancel out, and I would be left with x is equal to 6.3223 3 divided by 3 is equal to approximately 2.8. 1074. So x is equal to 2.1074. And now, remember our original equation was a to the power of x is equal to 80. So if I plug in 2.104 into my calculator, so let's 2.a to the power of 2.104, let me plug that into my calculator. So 8 to the power of 2.104, and yep, it is indeed approximately equal to 8. Because it's not the exact value of 80, but it is approximately equal to 80 because they 